Menkauran, Summertime at South Pavilion, Missing Shin the Elder. West, the sun slips quietly behind the mountain. East, the moon rises slowly over the lake. I lose my hair, enjoy the cool of evening. Lie down in peace near the open window. Breezes waft in lotus fragrance. Dewdrops chime on bamboo leaves. I'd like to find my lute and play it. Sadly, there's no one here to share the music. I'm wishing you were here with me, dear friend. But your presence only haunts my midnight dreams. So, another poem by Meng Haoran. In many aspects, this is similar to the previous poem. So, the topics that we encounter here are, first of all, what I would call the, the, the seasonal reference. So, this is a summer poem, and summer, as we all know from the song, summertime and the living is easy. <laughs> summer is not the most uh, common season to be sung in Chinese poetry, but it usually comes with a series of associations which we'll comment below. Remember, the previous one was about autumn. This one is about summer. The previous poem was about a mountain, and here we are at the South Pavilion. So this is not a nature landscape poem, but it is a scenery, a scenic poem. A lot of Chinese poems are located, as we mentioned, in nature and in mountains especially, but many others are located in human constructions. They, these can be cities or palaces or pavilions or towers. In this case, we have a pavilion. Now, a pavilion is a man-made structure that is meant to be uh, used for different purposes, but in poems it mainly appears as a place of recreation. It's a place where the different scholar officials meet and enjoy their conviviality. They drink together, they read poetry, they sing songs, they dance. Also, pavilions and towers can be quite high, at least uh, by, by Chinese standards of the time, so they sometimes work in a way as uh, substitute mountains. It's very typical for a poem to climb a pavilion, to climb a tower, and to gaze at the landscape, and to play with the, with the trope and, uh, and the same images of uh, extended seeing from a mountain and uh, internal and seeing and real knowledge and assimilation. So the second uh, topic after the seasonal reference to summer in this, in this poem is uh, enjoying a pavilion, being at a pavilion, and presumably doing the activities uh, of, of free time and leisure that are down there. And the third element, which was also present in the first, is uh, absence from a friend. We may assume that this poem was sent to Shin the Elder, as the previous poem had been sent to Zhang. Now, paraphrase of the poem. So, the poem has three stanzas. In the first one, we get the setting. If, we, if this was a movie instead of a poem, this would be the most general view. And, in fact, it's, it has clear directions, west and east. So, in the west, the sun is sleeping quietly behind the mountain. So, it's evening, it's sunset. And in the east, the moon is rising slowly over the lake. So, we're next to a lake and it's the beginning of night, the end of evening, the beginning of night. In summer, we must remember, which is a very hot season in China and Japan, unbearably hot. So, night time gives a little bit of a respite, so it would be more pleasant probably than the day. Second stanza, what is the poet or the poetic persona doing? He or she is trying to relax, he is trying to enjoy some coolness, some freshness, now that the sun has set in the pavilion. And the second stanza will be full of these images of, of summer coolness and relaxation. So, I lose my hair, enjoy the cool of evening, lie down in peace near the open window. Breezes waft in lotus fragrance. So, remember, we're near a lake, and lotuses not only grow on lakes, but they flower in the summer. So, it's appropriate that a lotus fragrance should be brought in by the breeze. And this is a... Uh, this is uh, something that affects the sense of smell. The next image will affect the sense of hearing. Dewdrops chime on bamboo leaves. 
we might imagine that dew is probably not present at this time of day, but maybe drops are falling, tap, 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 tapping on the bamboo leaves, creating a nice, relaxing, repetitive sound of water. And the last stanza. We don't see now what the poet is doing to relax, but what the poet is thinking. So he says that he'd like to find a lute and play it, but sadly there's no one here to share the music. So it would be possible to enjoy the leisure activities of a scholar official, but enjoying them alone is never enjoying them fully. And specifically, Meng Haoran's poetic persona wishes that Shin the Elder was there, his dear friend, but his presence only haunts midnight dreams. Midnight dreams. So we already mentioned in the two previous poems on on uh, Li Bai, dreaming of Li Bai, by 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 Du Fu. This idea of the Chinese that uh, you can visit a friend or a lover if you're really passionate about him or her in dreams. So you can travel to where that person is residing in a dream. And this seems to be the only communion between Men Haurang and Shin the Elder. The last stanza uh, so plays on, a, on an almost trite and conventional topic on wishing to share company with a friend. It's, it slightly evokes another topic that appears in a lot of Chinese poems, which is wakefulness at night. In these poems, the poetic persona, which can be a man or a woman, misses, is pining for a friend or a lover and spends the night awake and is unable to find repose or sleep because he misses so much the other person. In a nice poem, well constructed, uh, the parallelism is quite effective and I don't think it feels jarring at any moment. The first two lines are a very good example of parallelism that has been, uh, that has been preserved in the translation. So, west, east, sun, moon, slips, rises quietly, slowly behind, over the mountain, the lake. You can see the very strict parallelism. So, noun with a noun and with a, a, an opposite, if possible, meaning when they're nouns or directions, in other cases, so quietly, slowly, for example, in the adjectives. Uh, sorry, it's not adjectives, it's adverbs. In the adverbs, so they're not necessarily opposed, the opposite of quietly would be noisily, but well, they make some sort of a contrast. Mountains and lakes do make contrast in, in traditional Chinese poetry. Mountains and uh, rivers are also a contrast that is used uh, as a um, metonymic for the country, the land. Another example of parallelism in the second stanza, breezes waft in lotus fragrance, dewdrops chime on bamboo leaves. So breezes and dewdrops wafting and chiming, which is a sense of smell, sense of hearing. Lotus fragrance, bamboo leaves. So quite an intricately well-designed, well-wrought work of art, and yet as I say, I don't feel it sounding artificial. Quite a nice poem on it being in a relaxed state, being in a nice place, but not being completely happy because you're missing your friends. And that will be all for today. Tomorrow we will continue with the last of Meng Haoran's uh, pentasyllabic bushi in this book. It will also be a poem about missing a friend at the beginning of night. So we'll continue tomorrow.